how we use engineered nanoparticles to treat uh, allergic diseases. So what I'm focusing on is the food allergy. The food allergy is uh, very prevalent in the US. About 50 million Americans have food allergy. And one in 13 children has food allergy. The eight most common food allergies are peanut, tree nuts, milk, egg, wheat, soy, fish, so shellfish. So every three minutes, a food allergic reaction sends someone to the ER. So currently, there's no cure for food allergy. So the only FDA approved drug, Porphosia, is for treating the peanut allergy. So it's a oral immunotherapy. It reduces the severity of allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. However, its major shortcoming is you have to do this daily and you have to continue to practice food avoidance. That means no peanut allowed. And it doesn't induce long-term tolerance. So, and you still have the risk to have the severe allergic response named anaphylaxis. So how do we treat this more efficiently than before? Then the FDA approved, you know, a desensitization therapy. So what we learn is from the liver, okay? So what we learned from the liver transplantation is when you have a, a kidney transplantation, right? And you will use a lot of immune suppressant drug. However, when you transplant liver together with the kidney, you only need to use a little immune suppressive drug. That because the liver is an immune privileged organ that can confer the immune tolerance. So as we beginning to realize is that liver is an immune knowledge, immunological organ that you know play a major role in the immune tolerance. That is due to its unique function in the body. Every day we eat a lot of food, right? We drink. So there are a lot of foreign proteins, antigens, bacteria in the gut. And these may travel to the liver and to trigger immune response. So if we have a lot of a bacteria or the pathogen associated molecular patterns, right? Then the liver will be, you know, undergo inflammation every day. So that is a problem that the body cannot afford. That's why the immune system, especially the liver, has developed a function of immune tolerance. So how, what cells, you know, are playing a role in this immune tolerance? Actually, uh, many, there are many cells, cell types in the liver. The hepatocyte, 60 to 80%. The endothelial cells, it's about 50% of the non-hepatocytes. So these many cell types play a role in the immune tolerance. However, today I'm going to only talk about the endothelial cells. So the LSAC, it's called a liver sinusoidal endothelial cell. It has been growingly realized that they play an important role in immune tolerance. So they can interact 
with they take up the antigens, yeah. the food antigens for the particles that then present the antigen to the CD4 to CD8 cells to induce CD8 cells undergo apoptosis to induce CD4 to actually transform into the regulatory T cells to secrete cytokines like IL-10, TGL-beta to induce immune tolerance. So liver is also a major target for incidental or the targeted nano therapeutic nanoparticles. So we all know right now that the nanoparticles you injected in the blood, most of the particles will go to the RES system, including the labor. So the labor is a major you know, target for these nanoparticles. And the cells will take up these nanoparticles and process it. So to use this uh, knowledge, we hypothesized that, that if we deliver an antigen in a nanoparticle form and then inject it into the blood, so the particle will bring the antigen to the liver. And if we use a liver sinusoidal endothelial cell target, a ligand, then the l cells will take up this antigen and to produce the cytokines to promote the immune tolerance to induce CD4 T cells into the Fox P3 regulatory T cells, then these cells can travel around the body to target the uh, diseased area. For example, the allergic reactions in the lung or in other places. So we designed uh, and synthesized the LSEC targeting PLGA nanoparticles. The PLGA is a polymer that uh, through a double emulsion method, we can incorporate the water soluble antigens or peptides into the particle, then on the surface, we can either do absorption of manin or covalently conjugate the manin on these nanoparticles as a serve as a you know ligand to target the liver cells. And another ligand we use is the apolipoprotein B uh, peptide that can specifically targeting the IL-6 in the liver. So these particles, as you see here, are the ICEM images of these nanoparticles. These particles are around 200 to 300 nanometers. Why we use this size range is because the liver sinusoidal space, it's a fenestrated uh, capillary are present there. So the capillary has these fenestrations has a size of around 150 nanometers. So a particle size about 200 nanometers will not be filtered out. So it will have more time to interact with the LSAC cells. And when we tested the, you know, we use the model antigen of OVA, OVA albumin, a major component of egg vet. That's a major food allergen. It's also a most used uh, antigen to study the allergic reactions. So we incorporate OVA into the PLGA nanoparticles and we detected its release rate, you can see the time scale is uh, uh, on the days. It take, you know, uh, about uh, 12 days to release 40%. So this slow release profile is beneficial for uh, the body to, you know, induce immune tolerance 
and the immune tolerance can be durable due to you know, the constant release of the antigen to the cell then trigger the biological responses. So we tested their effects on two cell lines, the LSAC cell line and the Kufr cell line. One is the, the endothelial cells, one is the, the macrophage. So we use this targeted you know, particle to treat these cells, then what we see is the LSAC take much more these nanoparticles than the kufr, the macrophage cell line. So that proves our, you know, the targeting is working. And when we tested the secretion of the tolerogenic cytokines, what we see is the particles, especially the upper B peptide, uh, uh, PLGA nanoparticles induce the highest level of TGF beta. TGF beta play a major role in the immune tolerance in maintaining the you know regular T, T cell phenotypes. Then the L4 is another cytokine that play a major role in T cell proliferation, and IL10 is another cytokine that play a major role in immune tolerance. What you see here, the upper B uh, liganded nanoparticles induce the, the highest level of these cytokines. And when we inject these particles in vivo through the tail vein, what we want to see is whether they accumulate in the liver. On the left side, you can see in the middle is the liver that uh, most of the particles go to the liver, not to the other organs. And the highest uh, signals, you can see the fluorescent signals, because we label the particle with the fluorescent dye, you can see the upper B uh, induced the, the highest you know, liver uh, localization. And then we determine whether these nanoparticles can be taken up by LSACs or Kufr cells. And what we see from in this slide is the LSAC cell optic. The cell is labeled in green. The particle is labeled in red. What you see here on the upper B treated animal, you can see a lot of the yellow, the colocalization between the LSACs and the nanoparticles. So the colocalization index is around 60%. That's a very high you know, colocalization rate. And we also performed the labeled the Kufr cells in the liver. What you see is a very few, you know, the yellow uh, overlaid uh, picture. That means the colocalization is, you know, only around the two, 20 to 30 percent. So that means these particles preferentially uh, get taken up by the LSACs. So under these, you know, circumstances, we decided to do the animal experiment that we use the over sensitization and the challenge model that it can trigger the um, allergic, uh, you know, lung inflammation. So we pre-treat these animals with the nanoparticles twice, uh, separated by a week. Then we do the certain sensitization and the challenge, you know, across the many weeks. Then on the 40 day, we sacrifice the mouse so we treat it with the, all the different nanoparticles and we use the nanoparticles with that over as control. And what you see is that IgE level are significantly reduced after the nanoparticle treatment. The upper B uh, labeled uh, nanoparticle, the surface targeting ligand 
at the, the lowest level of IgE. IgE is the major antibody that is triggered uh, by the sensitization process to induce, play a major role in inducing allergic lung inflammation. The IgG1 is uh, another antibody, play a major role in allergic responses, is also significantly reduced. Then the neutrophils and eosinophils, the macrophages are all dropped. And the lowest level is the over its upper B ligand. And when you see the lung histological sections, you can see the, you know, compared with the control uh, normal mice, the over sensitization and the challenge induced uh, severe, you know, inflammation in the lung. However, the nanoparticle treatment gradually reduced this inflammation in the lung. On the lower right, you can see the response is really low. There's almost no sign of inflammation. And when we take the bronchial alveolar lavage fluid from the lung, and we detect their levels that play a major role in Th2 allergic inflammatory responses. You can see the IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13 levels are all dropped. And the upper B labeled nanoparticle uh, reduced the levels almost comparable to the control. And the other immunotolerogenic cytokine levels we detected. What we see is the compare with the control, the over sensitized and challenged mice, the particle with the antigen can induce higher TGF beta and the over uh, upper B nanoparticles induce the highest level. The TGF beta, as I mentioned before, the play a major role in the immune tolerance in maintaining regulatory T cells. However, the L10 level doesn't change much. And for interferon gamma, uh, cytokine play a role in the TH1 response. There's no detection, proving this is a you know allergic response that uh, is a TH2 pathway. So then we determine whether there is a you know, regulatory T cell presence in the lung. And uh, as you can see, from, compared with the control, there's uh, no regulatory T cell, FOXP3 po positive regulatory T cells there. In the positive control over sensitized and challenged animals, there is a little regulatory T cells. However, as the, the nanoparticles treatment brings in uh, increasing level of regulatory T cells. And the upper B, as you see at the lower right, that induce the highest uh, you know, numbers of regulatory T cells in the tissue sections. So all of these uh, shows that our nanoparticle with antigen can induce immune tolerance to generate the regulatory T cells in the liver, then travel to the lung to suppress the immune uh, response there. And we further used, you know, a oral anaphylaxis model, you know, to study the uh, more severe type of uh, allergic re reactions, what we found is that the particle with the ova in, can surprise the mast cell MCPT1 release. And the anaphylaxis symptom score is also reduced. What we made further progress is that 
instead of using the over protein, the whole protein in the nanoparticles, we use the epitope called the OT2 epitope of the over uh, uh, protein. This OT2, we know it can trigger, you know, the TH2 response, uh, activate the, uh, can be presented by the MHC2 on the, you know, IL LSEC cells, then trigger this uh, induction of regulatory T cells. So the protein is not needed in this case. Only a dominant epitope can do the same job. And recently we tested this in a peanut anaphylaxis model. So we move from the OVA a model antigen to the peanut uh, protein and the peanut protein epitope what you see on the mast cell release, as I show here, that the epitope incorporated the nanoparticle induced the, the lowest level of mast cell release, uh, almost comparable to the control. So that suggests that the food allergy uh, by the peanut can be also treated using the same approach. So to summarize my talk here is that we use PRG nanoparticles incorporating with antigen, either OVA or peanut protein, or maybe other proteins uh, that play roles in the food uh, allergy. Then these LSAC cells, the endothelial cells in the liver, take them up and present the antigen to the MHC molecule that binds with the TCR on CT4 T cell, then cause this T cell to differentiate, to express FOXP3 to induce the regulatory T cell. Then these cells can go systemically to induce the inhibition of allergic response. So these uh, art, uh, results has been published in recent years. So the trick is to how do you train the regulatory T cell at durable uh, levels to induce, to reduce the, you know, allergic responses. So I'd like to thank our collaborators, our colleagues in CNSI at the UCLA, uh, also the funding sources from the National Institute of Health. So I'd like to uh, conclude my talk here and thank you very much for your attention.